Good morning everyone and welcome to our morning inspiration. Thursday, February 29, 2024. I pray that you are all doing okay. I pray that the Lord will continue to be with you and keep you. Now, our reading today comes to us from Exodus chapter 23. We will read verse 1 to 9. And it says, Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many, to rest judgment. Neither shalt thou countenance a poor man in his cause. If thou meet thine enemy's ox or his ass going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. If thou see the ass of him that ate thee lying under his burden, and wouldest forbear to help him, thou shalt surely help with him. Thou shalt not rest the judgment of thy poor in his cause. Keep thee far from a false matter, and the innocent and righteous slay thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. And thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blinded the wise and perverted the words of the righteous. Nine and last says, Also thou shalt not oppress a stranger, for ye know the heart of a stranger, seeing ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. And I say, Amen. May we understand what the Lord is saying to us here. He has said a lot here in this passage through his servant and we must take heed to his report. As it says that we must not raise a false report. Now, what does it mean to raise a false report? It means to give a false report of something that you have no idea of. So in other words, if somebody asks you if you see me take up the money and you did not see me take up the money, you have no record of me taking up the money. You were never there in the first place to see whether or not I took up the money. So I am innocent, but you go and say that, yes, I saw that Ryan took up the money and you start to give even details. That is a false report and that is wrong. So if any of us is doing anything like that don't do it only speak the truth and nothing else it doesn't matter if it is your friend your family or whomever speak the truth at all times no matter the consequences your conscience will love you for it or if you were asked to be a witness in a case against somebody who is accused and you go and give a false report of the event that is what it means and so you jeopardize the innocency of that individual because of the false report that you give so the bible is saying that we should not do that okay that is wrong and it says that we must not follow a multitude to do wrong and in a lot of cases the multitude is never right is always a few and so whatever it is that we are going to do whatever it is that we are going to follow someone to do make sure that it is noble make sure that it is a righteous act and make sure that at the end of the day the lord can be pleased and will be pleased with you and i so we must follow after the way of the lord and not after the way of evil okay so keep that in mind it says something interesting here that we need to pay attention to. If our enemies need our help, we should offer it to them. So if someone hates you and you know that this person hates you, you must not repay evil for evil. You must still treat that person with kindness. You must still treat them with love and fairness because God expects us to display the characteristics of righteousness and love so it says that if we see their ox or their ass going astray 
then we need to what? bring them back to him or to the person. No, it may not be an ass or a, or an ox. It may not be a, a livestock. What if you're going about your business one day and you see this person that hates you in an accident and they need your help? Or you're saying that you're going to pass them by because they don't like you or they are, or they are your enemies so you're not going to help them? No, of course not. You should help them regardless of how they feel about you because remember that you are not representing yourself you and i are representing the character of christ in how we treat others and in fact the, the bible in matthew remind us that we should treat others well we should do good unto them even if they despise us we should do good unto them whatever it is that we do to them it will be unto God. So it is like God is actually here and you and I are doing the thing to him. Keep that in mind. Never repay evil for evil. Always treat everyone with kindness and love, no matter how they treat you. One more thing I would like to state. We should never take gifts in order to, to cover up any deceit. In other words, let me put it another way. We should never take bribe. So if someone did something, and they are going to try to pay us off in some way so that they will avoid the penalty of what they did. We should never take it from them. And I know that this is something that we struggle with in our world today. From the highest level to the lowest point, it is one of the highest forms of corruption that exists amongst human beings. And because of that practice, it corrupts the mind and it turns a blind eye to justice and perverts it. So when you should deal fairly, you are not able to properly execute fairness because what? Your mind has been corrupted and swayed by whatever bribery that you accept. And that is an unrighteous act. That is a perverted act. And anyone who is in leadership who practice these things, God is going to hold you accountable because you are placed in a position of authority to make sure that justice and fairness is always executed. It's not about how you feel. It's not about fatting up your pocket. It's not about, you know, looking out for yourself. It's about dealing with your fellow human beings with fairness, with honesty, and with love. Do you get that? So no one, it doesn't matter who you are, should practice any of these things. Because the moment that we start to do these things, we won't be able to execute judgment in a fair manner because what? Our hearts and our minds have been corrupted and now we are blinded and not able to see clearly to do what is right and so if you are somebody who is practicing this already you need to stop and if you are not practicing it to god be the glory don't start let us remember that we are in god's grace and so when we displease him when we do these things, we are setting a bad example for others. We are setting, we are sending a message to the world and to everyone that looks up to us that this is what it is supposed to be like when it's not. Okay? And there's a saying that goes, so a man thinketh, so is he. So if you have a corrupt way of thinking and doing things, if you have a perverted mind, if you have a selfish heart, then these are the things that will emanate from you. These are the things that you will practice. But the good thing about it is that these things, it is not a permanent scar on your life. You can erase them with the grace of God. So it is not set in stone. Stone. When it is set in stone is when you constantly refuse to change and listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and heed to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Then that's when it will be set in stone because the only person who can help you, you keep rejecting. And that's what they refer to as the unpardonable sin. Because the Holy Spirit cannot help you with some, something that you're unwilling to confess. Do you get my drift? So, I am asking you, especially those who are standing as ambassadors and as Jesus' representative on this earth, please follow what the Lord is asking you and I to do. Don't follow 
the leading and the examples of the world because in all in often time they are tainted and so it's best if you follow the principles of god where you can't go wrong so may god continue to help you may god continue to help me because i am in this too you are not alone and so all of us need to make sure that we are living a moral and a pure life an upstanding life we need to be good citizens of heaven as well as good citizens of earth and take the good citizen of earth in context what i mean by good citizens of earth is you will not break the law of the land and as long as your 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 moral compass is not and your spiritual um and as long as it doesn't go against your your principle as a christian by all means you can follow that but if it conflicts with your principles and your moral compass then you know that it can't be good because nothing good should put you in that compromising position okay but aside from that make sure that we live a life that others can look to and look to Jesus who is able to help and to save us. God bless you and have a wonderful rest of the day. Amen.